Alright, welcome back everybody. We have a special guest with us. Richard, all the way from the UK. What's up, man? Give thanks, give thanks, Mr. Primo. Delighted to be on the show. Everything yeah, is well. Um, we've got a Jamaican skier who's yeah. gone down, made it actually down the hill. Yeah. Um, <laughs> up in Beijing, so full respect. A whole heap of them get wiped out, you know, so he yeah. made it down. So we're giving thanks to make a strike again. All right. Unlike the Jamaican football team, but that's another story. All right. Well, that is what we're here to discuss, right? Um, I sent you an article earlier this week coming out of the Jamaica Observer, written by one Jordan Sterling. It's more of a editorial, more than an article, I would say, right? It was titled, Where There's No Vision, Jamaica's Football Will Perish. Yes, the sir. Article now, Richard, is basically they want heads to roll which most fans are feeling that way because we are disappointed, aren't we? Um, but do we want to throw out the baby with the bath water? You know what I mean? That's the question. <laughs> That's that is the question. question. There has to be changes, but what are we going to change it to? I know, I'm going to leave it to you for summarize the article. You have some points you want us to go through. You want to start there, sir? Well, Having checked the article from the from the observer, it yeah. seemed to it seemed to point towards um, ineptitude on the part of the JFF. And interestingly, controversially in my opinion, the writer seemed to go on a path that suggested that the current crop across the Jamaican diaspora, yeah. rather than being arguably the best we've ever had, is yeah. actually overrated. Yeah, what you said was average at best, I think were his words. Uh, yeah. He, he yeah. wasn't dancing, beating about the bush. He was basically yeah. tantamount to saying that they're not all they cracked up to be. And, yeah. and this, this greatest crop of all, of all time, arguably, was far from, far, far from the truth. Um, mm -hmm. In his opinion, I, I would straight up flatly disagree. Yeah, uh, and I, I think that uh, going forward, there needs to be some hard conversations, some hard yeah. truths spoken going forward for the the betterment of Jamaican football. I I do think that Jamaican football in general has been overrated, and yeah. for one reason or the other, I think going forward, we actually in 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 in, in actually counter countering this gentleman's article. Yeah. I think we need to invest in overseas Jamaican talent. Yeah. But arguably from a younger age or from an earlier time in yeah. qualifying so that they're, they're together, greater cohesiveness, yeah. better preparation, and that they can lead into the Gold Cup and Nations Cup and on to World Cup qualification. Of course, the next issue is the availability of these players. Will yeah. they be available? going forward for these 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 gold cup and nation cup campaign uh, leading into the world cup i think jamaica face unique challenges and opportunities ever since jumping on the the proverbial juta bus <laughs> or the wagon back back in um the gold cup campaign that recently took place i think it was just after the Suriname game yeah and i saw the lineup for the jamaican squad and i i inquired i inquired uh, why are the jamaican uh, vloggers, such as the ones I was speaking to, I believe it was the fourth official and uh, coaches there, Coach Minzy. Yeah, big guy. And I, I, yeah, man, full respect, full respect. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I was bringing the edu edutainment angle, and I yeah. saw them playing what I called uh, uh, exchanging the the, the the chairs around on the Titanic. Yeah, it was <laughs> a game of <laughs> musical <laughs> chairs on the Titanic. No, no. Oh, you mean? <laughs> it, it looked uh, like they were playing tiddlywinks on the board. It looked like they were playing tiddlywinks. They said, what's tiddlywinks? <laughs> I had to break it down for them, Captain Primo. I had to break mm -hmm. it down. It was an unexpected question. But mm -hmm. I just didn't expect... Um, I, I wondered why they were waxing lyrical and expecting this team to beat the likes of Canada, mm. Mexico, uh, uh, the United States given that even though they had C plus, B minus strength squads out, I wanted to know what was this Jamaican team under Tapper Whitmore bringing yeah. that made them so confident that they'd reached the final 
uh, let alone win it. So um, okay. going forward, I think that the future's Jamaican diaspora style. That's where I think right. the, the, can, the can midterm I answer, future is. Yeah, can I answer that part that makes the um that made the Jamaican fans so confident. It was off prior yes, performance. In the, in the tournament before, they made it to the final. Two tournaments before, they did pretty good. Um, I think they made it to the final in both of them and lost. So they're thinking, they're, we are thinking, we're going in with a stronger team. Um, we should do better. But that's what the thing is, underestimating your opponent and not respecting the competition. Because you go in there, right. you go in there ill prepared, and you saw the results that you got. Yeah, you got out of the group, but you're supposed to get out of the group in a gold cup. You know what I mean? When you look at a gold cup, if you don't reach to the semi final, in my eye, as a Jamaica, it's a failure. You know what I mean? I'm I'm mm-hmm. a realistic reggae boy fan. I think getting to a semi final, a final is a good performance. I don't think we are there yet to win it because we're not organized as a um federation and i think that is where i don't think talent pool wise this guy is talking about substandard rare rare ra, ra. look around none of these teams are really blessed with a whole epop first class um talent their their each team has two or three players where you can say play at the highest level right and they right. they they're, they're kind of spread around the teams some teams have none at all some teams that just are good teams like a Panama. You understand? We right, have right. a good system. We are not going anywhere until our system matches up. And our system comes from straight from the leadership to the system on the field. You understand? And once our leadership don't understand football, we can't go forward. Because that's a basic thing. I don't think our, our, the people in charge of our football are, are football crazy people like that. They, they strike me as more business minded <clears throat> people than football people because if you're a football man, you would have said something wrong. You understand me? I wonder if certain people underestimated. I certainly, mm. um, speaking from London, England, I underestimated the, <sighs> the, the, the influence and, yeah, the influence that the JFF, for example, held in terms of a successful campaign for Jamaica. Secondly, mm-hmm. I think I underestimated Tapper Whitmore and his well lack of tactical acumen, shall we say. I, yeah. I came on board and I asked the question straight up. Mm. What are the strengths and qualities of Theodore Tapper Whitmore? Yeah. He must be there. He's he's, he's performed um for Jamaica uh, on the international stage of course at the 1998 World Cup. But what does he bring to the party as a coach? And I thought that he was going to be kind of an inspirational figure, someone who understood about, you know, how to deploy his midfield, his defence, the attacking formations. But the a game after game, it slowly, 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 well, it, it, it came to pass that really he wasn't quite up to it. But nonetheless, people yeah. were still, there was still the narrative that Jamaica was set to shine at the Gold Cup and then going into the World Cup campaign, um, with the overseas talent added to the existing team that yeah. they were going to, you know, make the top three or four. What, what were your expectations, Primo? I mean, yeah, what was your after, take on, after on the Tapa Gold Cup? and the team? <laughs> after the Gold Cup, yes. I, I, after the Gold Cup, I did a video um, that says the Gold Cup was a total failure. I don't remember the exact title of it. But my sentiment is was, and it's still the same, your Gold Cup was your dress rehearsal for your World Cup qualifiers. And if that is how we performed, we weren't going to make the World Cup. And I said it. I said it. These these were the dress rehearsals. Two teams didn't do great in the dress rehearsals. Jamaica and Panama. You understand? Everybody else put out them little fight. Honduras didn't do too great. So we could have seen who was going to struggle from early. Panama made the adjustments. And this is something I'm going to say over and over. My, my listeners are going tired of hearing me say this. Panama made the adjustments, we didn't. You understand? That, that is my thought on it more than anything else. We went into the dress rehearsals, got things wrong, and went back in with the same thing. We should have let go top off from them time there. What are your thoughts? 
Well, I was willing to give Tapa the benefit of the doubt, given the narrative that he had developed a lot of camaraderie amongst the players and respect. But as time went on, as more information started to come to light, including uh, Paul Hall from from the coach's mouth, this is where it really um, hit home for me. When the coach himself said that Paul Hall um, is left to deal with the the Jamaican players from overseas, and he communicates with them, leaving Tapa to communicate with the local players, that 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 raised a red flag after the red flag, and I thought, mm -mm, something, this can't work. This 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 not that good. Do you think that those hardcore fans, passionate fans, have actually misread? the Jamaican footballing landscape and we're going to come on to further discussions around that narrative when we come to the vexed question of local talent quote unquote versus overseas Jamaican get that Jamaican talent but where uh. do you think the, the someone people have been overestimating and underestimating in terms of expectation levels as regards Jamaican football no I think um I think it's clear to see. I, um, I don't know if it's hindsight, know that the, the thing there has failed, but it's clear to see that the program has been in trouble from probably um, last year. Last year when January it was. Last year around this time when players were on strike. That's when we oh. saw a major um, recruitment drive going on and then results started to really slip. Because if you go back and check results from, from around that time or slightly before, you know what I mean? And then there were some really harsh things going on in the media between the players and the admin and all of that. So that, so looking back at that now, that's not a good way to start. You know what I mean? Months before a World Cup campaign is supposed to be start, you can't even find it, your right team, you don't. And then you start recruiting and you recruiting who you can get. You know what I mean? You're not recruiting based off a plan or identifying players of a certain age or of certain skill set or anything like that. You're recruiting based off of who you can get. So you're going to get some good, you're going to get some bad, you're going to get some in between. You know what I mean? But we're not going to bash talking. any Yeah, we're not going to bash any players. That is not what we're here for. You know what I mean? It's just a fact in a life. Some players better than some. It don't matter where you're born or where you come from. It's just a thing. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think if you're going to go out there go recruit, recruit the best from anywhere them come from. Um, and then you have this constant chop and change, chop and change, chop and change. Combined with um, with more <clears throat> just not looking fit for the position at that time. You know what I mean? So it was a whole lot of factors. Bad coaching, bad admin, bad team management, lack of planning. A whole lot of things go into the failed campaign. You know what I mean? But we could go there and sit here and look at it and say this and that and oh, this it's this fault and that fault. But at the end of the day, it's organization. And teams with less less talented teams with better organization are doing much better than Jamaica in, in the October.